I was recently contacted by Slate Digital to see if I would try out their new Infinity Base plugin, which comes out today. And I did, and it's really cool. So I made this video to show you how I'm using it on a couple songs. First, I'm gonna use it on acoustic stand-up bass. And the reason I'm doing that is because acoustic stand-up basses tend to have a very uneven frequency response depending on where on the neck it's being played and what notes are being played. I'll be using a song by the band Greenwood Rye, who I'm currently recording and producing. And since I'm going to be working with a lot of low frequencies in this video, you're going to need to be listening with a pair of headphones or on some good speakers to hear what I'm doing. Now you'll notice on the higher notes, pretty much the low end goes away. There's none of that subby sound down there, just the sub thing that you want from the bass. Some of you are gonna say a stand-up bass doesn't really have that much low end on those notes. And that's true, but if you were standing in the room, you would get more from it. And secondly, I'm making records, guys. I'm not necessarily trying to represent reality here. I'm just trying to make something that sounds really good and has consistent low end. Hey, I want my records to sound the way I want them to sound. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's the plug-in. Hear that? Take it back out. Go back in. Big difference. Now here's what the plugin's actually doing. Here's just the effect. Now back in. Now I only have 20% here. I didn't need that much. Let me crank it up a lot. It's too much now. It doesn't need that much in there it, it, it does its job and I picked uh, 98 Hertz because he's hitting a G a lot and that's where the center fundamental frequency is a lot in reality I would probably automate that frequency point around a little bit there's a couple sections in the song where he's in another range and I'm not quite getting the effect I'd probably just automate it up a little bit or a little down for certain sections but most of the song that works well I also tried out uh, the other setting here the deep setting which is more made for bass it's got a nice punch to it there it is by itself I, I like this one a lot, but the warm one just seemed to work really well for me. I, I don't know why. This one's, maybe it would work better on electric bass. Let me go back to the warm here. Yeah, now one thing I like about the warm is this character knob. As you turn it up, it gets a little more saturation. I really kind of like that, and I usually use a lot of saturation in bass when I'm mixing it. Check it out. There it is. A lot more saturation. It's a smoother sound there. Let's hear it in the mix. Here it is with the plug-in. And without. Back in. Back out. You can actually hear more of a difference in the mix than soloed up. To demonstrate how I enhance the low end of an electric bass guitar, I'm gonna use a song called Hearts Aligned. In the song, I played bass and I ran it through a big muff pedal, which is a great sound. The only problem with doing that is that sometimes when you're running a bass through some distortion, it'll remove a lot of the low end, the really super sub stuff in there. I like this tone a lot, but I lost some of the low end in the process, so I want to put that back in and give the end of this song just this big, beefy, boomy low end. I started with the punchy bass mode. I found that this one tracks pretty good no matter where I have this frequency here. It works really good. I'm tending to keep the frequency a little higher because I go to some high notes in this section of the song. Now, moving the character to the right adds more saturation and I don't need any more, so I'm keeping a little bit over to the left. Here it is without it. Now with it. Without it. 
back in. I like this setting a lot. Next, I tried the warm mode. Now, I like the way this sounds on some of the lower notes, but on the higher notes, I just sometimes had a hard time getting it to really track it the right way. Here it is without it. And then back in. Yeah, I'm not getting as much on those high notes there as on punchy. The other thing with this one was that because there's so much distortion on this thing, it's kind of not a really fair comparison. It's a bit of a challenge because the distortion is causing it to track weirdly. You see how that's like the response is kind of jumping around a little bit. Yeah, right in the middle of the note because of the distortion. I might have moved my fingers a little bit and it's doing something. The distortion is causing the tracking to jump to different frequencies. And that showed up on the warm mode more than any of the other modes for this sound here. I like it on the low notes, though. Here it is without it. With it. Let's move on to the deep mode. Now I found deep mode to be my favorite for this sound. This just sounds righteous. Here it is with it. And without it. With it. Just overall has a better tone to me. Here it is with it. Without it. Back in. Now the character does this thing where when you move it to the right, it actually gives it a little bit more sustain. I'm gonna turn it up some here. It's cool. I wanted it to be a little more precise, a little more separation between the notes, so I brought it this way. If I get the frequency too low, it doesn't pick up the higher notes. So this was my favorite sound. The only problem I had was right here where I do that fancy bass part. You'll see on the higher notes, it's losing the low end. Especially here. It's gone. Now, if I move the frequency up here, it'll catch these notes. So what I ended up doing was this. I ended up automating the frequency on those higher notes to capture the best spot for that section of the song. So in the mix, all that sub so this is going to really help the end of this song which is supposed to be rather majestic and epic yeah i like this i like this a lot <laughs>